This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Big night across the NBA and the NHL for tonight with nine games in the NBA and five in the NHL as well. We're going to break down all of that today with Tom Vecchio picking his brain on traditional market bets and player props across both leagues to get you ready for what should be a fun Wednesday night. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research. Joined here as mentioned by Tom Vecchio. You can find him on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio. Vecchio one and Tom pretty fun night of sports coming up. How you doing today? I'm doing good. Yeah, really, really interesting night across the NBA specifically. There are a lot of high over under games. There's also a number of injury situations, which could change things massively for some game lines. But I do think there are some really good spots to attack. Yeah, and we'll talk about those spots. We'll talk about uh, traditional market bets where you're talking about the impact of those guys potentially sitting and much more to get you ready for Wednesday in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast later on today. Tom is back with you once again. He'll be talking about a thriller Thursday night between Easton Stick and Aiden O'Connell. You're going to need some action to have some fun with that one, you know, if you are so inclined. Uh, But that'll be up on the Covering the Spread podcast feed later on today and also up on FanDuel TV+. Plus. I gave my first look at NFL Week number 15, uh, spreads, money lines, and totals my models like. That is up on the Covering the Spread podcast feed, the FanDuel YouTube page, and FanDuel TV Plus as well. Score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book right now. New customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's 150 bucks if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there is no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. There is a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, totals, and more. So visit FanDuel and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL, must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. First online real money wager only. $5 pregame money line wager required. $10 $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as is non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, and Virginia. Call 1 800 Next Step. Or text next step to 53342 in Arizona, 1 888 789 7777. Or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut. 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana. 1-800-522-4700. Visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas. 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland. 1-800-GAMBLER.NET in West Virginia. 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org. Or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts. Or call one 877 hope and why or text open why in new york let's dig in now to the nba tom and talk about last week we saw the in-season tournament and seemed like a lot of fun honestly wrapped up on saturday lakers taking down the pacers and i want to talk to you about takeaways from the tourney i I think mostly from like a team level perspective from a betting perspective you know what were the big things that stood out to you or was this format too unique to have any major takeaways going forward I think there's it we have to take I think there's some minor things we can take away potentially to move forward with. Uh one, the Pacers are a very fun, exciting team. I mentioned last week that they're playing, you know, all these games to the over, but they actually are a solid team. And it's like they got a little bit of a taste of what postseason-ish basketball is like. Sure. And that is a building block for them. So a part of me likes to take the Pacers to win the Central. With They're at plus 650 right now to win the Central. The Cavs are at plus 290, and the Bucks are at minus 240. So the Pacers are showing that they can kind of hang with some of these top teams. So I, I like them at plus 650. They're sitting in a playoff spot right now. They're only a few games behind the Bucks, And I almost just want to take this position as a spot to hold in the portfolio waiting for a cash out and just cash out at plus money. I still think the Bucs are the best team in this division. The Cavs have been dealing with some injuries. I, If it was a seven-game series, I, I would take the Cavs over the Pacers. But 
I think they all can make the playoffs, but just holding that ticket, if it gets later in the season, you could just cash out. So the Pacers got that taste of postseason. I think they're for real. They're here to stay. And you can probably use that as some leverage going forward where they play all these games to the overs. They're not amazing on defense. And I think they'll still be underdogs as they are tonight. And I think you could just continue to take the, them with the points. Is a situation where you think the market has been a bit slow to react to the Pacers? Do you think what they're doing is sustainable? What's your read on where the market sits on them right now? So the, I think the market reacted appropriately, especially with uh, Tyrese Halliburton to an MVP. I think it was at like 30 to 1 to an MVP. I think he's around 16 to 1 right now. Uh, we have to double check that. 15 to 1, 16 to 1 for Halliburton to an MVP, somewhere around there. Yeah, he's 16 or 15 to 1 right now. 15 to 1. So like it, he moved and it's like, okay, he has this like big, these big performances, prime time. And people are like buying into that. So the hype is real around uh, Halliburton. And there are a lot of encouraging reports uh, from Adrian Wojnarowski that Halliburton is trying to do what Attentacumbo did in Milwaukee. And instead of, you know, moving somewhere else, he wants to bring people into the Pacers. Yeah. So at the trade deadline, there's a lot of rumors that they're going to be very aggressive at the trade deadline. And that could just be another thing that bolsters their, their central division odds. Okay, so we got a little taste of the Pacers being a fun basketball team in the in-season tournament. Got to see them, you know, make a really good run. Didn't get the win there, but uh, some potential takeaways about ways to get exposure to them going forward. Again, 15-1 to 1 for Halliburton to win MVP, and then they are plus 650 to win the division. And Tom, as we talked about before, I'm not the most in tune with the NBA, so I want to ask you about the division stuff. Is the benefit of winning the division great enough where we'd see the Bucks like fully, fully push during the regular season in order to win that division? Because we know that like they're a team that has, you know, they have NBA finals aspirations. We've right. seen teams like that not push 100% during the regular season. If it's tight late in the year, will they actually go all out to kind of maybe negate a run from the Pacers or Cavs? Or does it not matter to, to the extent where they care a ton? So the division, the division definitely matters less because at a certain point they're going to be worried about the one or the two seed against the 76ers or the Celtics. It's yeah. not about the division. So okay. they're, they're, they're going to be pushing to keep the one seed rather than keep the division. If gotcha. that makes sense. So like having home court against the, the Celtics is more important than having home court and winning the division over the Cavs. Okay, that does make a lot of sense, and I appreciate that explainer. Let's shift now and talk about the games in the NBA for tonight. Nine separate games. Let's begin things off with the traditional market bets. You mentioned a lot of things up in the air as far as injuries go, but where are you seeing value right now in the traditional markets at FanDuel Sportsbook? Let's go to two of the late games, and that'll be starting off with the Brooklyn Nets plus two and a half against the Phoenix Suns. The Suns are on the second night of a back-to-back. -back. The Suns are dealing with a number of injuries. So last night, Kevin Durant did not play for the Suns. And, you know, will he play tonight against his former team? Not not sure yet. Bradley Beal for the Suns returned to the lineup last night. It was his first game since November 12th. And given his injury situation, the fact that he's, this was his fourth game this season. So given his injury situation, I'm not entirely sure that they're going to push him out there on the second night of a back-to-back. Josh Okoji also is not expected to play for the Suns tonight. So their lineup is completely in flux tonight and are going to be shorthanded in some capacity. The Nets are playing solid ball. They're 16-5-1 and one against the spread this year. They didn't play last night. They're coming off a of full rest, and they match up well against the Suns from like a, a size perspective. So when we add all this together, and maybe do the Nets want to get some a little bit of revenge, knowing that Durant's on the other side, they traded him, like all these sorts of things, maybe. But it really does make sense for the Nets, who have been playing really good ball against the team, that their lineup is shorthanded, they're on the second time back-to-back. -back. There's a lot going on, combined with the fact that, yeah, the Suns are struggling a little bit on defense this year. Yeah, reporting was like KD should be good to go tonight. Beal, though, had a minutes restriction on him last night. So I kind of assume the same as you, where less likely to go for him and Koji getting, getting hurt in that game uh, last night. A lot of ambiguity for the Suns. So the Nets plus two and a half, minus 114 right now for that game. You mentioned another game uh, out west in the later slots. Which one are you looking at there? That would be the Knicks minus six against Utah. The Knicks are actually playing really solid basketball as of late. Looking at their recent performances, you know, you see these two losses. They lost against the Celtics and they lost against the Bucs. I don't consider those bad losses. They're really good teams. And more importantly, the Jazz are extremely injured, especially when it comes to their big men between Walker Kessler and 
Kelly Olynyk should be good to go. Laurie Markin is questionable. Jordan Clarkson is out. Um, and John Collins is also questionable for the Utah Jazz. So this is a really straightforward spot for the Knicks. They've been playing good ball despite some actual losses in terms of the win-loss column. And Julius Randle being at like peak form right now, their power forward, he really should be able to dominate down low given the lack of depth that the Jazz have at big men. So Knicks, they, and they're also getting like a, a tough break because like, oh, they have to play the Celtics and the Bucks X amount more time to get the in-season tournament. And they're kind of, I don't want to say complaining about that, but that's kind of the vibe that I've gotten from some of these reports where it's true. Like they have to play against the best teams extra times just because the in-season tournament, this is a chance for them to right the ship get back going like, in an easy matchup. And it's also a big pace up spot for them because they're dead last in the league in pace. So literally anyone they play is going to be a pace up spot. And the pace up spot matters here because they are laying, you're laying six points and you want right. them to be able to get a larger total uh, when you're laying that much uh, in a game. So I think that does make a lot of sense. Mitchell right. Robinson out for the Knicks, kind of a bummer there, but it sounds like they've got the depth to cover up for that uh, in the interim. What about player props, Tom? What stands out to you there across the NBA for tonight? Let's go to Hawks and Raptors. This game has a one and a half point spread. It has a 240 and a half over under. Massive total, super close spread, fantastic for player production. Uh, this is also a pace up spot for the Raptors. They're 19th in the league. The Hawks are sitting at fourth. So let's go to the PRA bet points, rebounds, assists combined for Scotty Barnes for the. Toronto Raptors, uh, over 36 and a half uh, PRA, it's sitting at minus 111. He's averaging about 33 and a half, 34, and it, depending if you want to round up or not. But the double double slash triple double potential from, from him is there every single night. The shot volume is there from him. The usage is there. You know, can you look? I mean, the steals and assists, uh, the steals and blocks don't matter too much for PRA, but he's all over the place in terms of filling up the stat sheet and defensively this game is not going to have much of it as the 240 over under would indicate. And a one and a half point spread means theoretically, this is probably one of the best games on the slate that has overtime potential. So if we look at Barnes and his production, when he can already go for 30 plus real points, I, I love this game environment from a fancy perspective. I spoke heavily about Scotty Barnes on the daily ISO. I love him for PRA bet. I'm not worried about the Hawks defense, everything, every box is possibly checked for the Raptors tonight. Okay, so Scotty Barnes across the board, not just for betting, but also in DFS uh, for tonight. Check out the Daily ISO uh, on the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed for that. But then Scotty Barnes, the PRA bet over 36 and a half, minus 111 right now at FanDuel Sportsbook for that one. Any other player props you're eyeing for tonight, Tom? Uh, I don't believe any Lakers props are posted. They played last night, and the report after the game was that both LeBron and Anthony Davis, all, their status is quote-unquote uncertain. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm not sure if there were are there Laker props, pl- uh, points props for the Lakers posted yet. But if so there are, or once there are, D'Angelo Russell, their starting point guard, could be the new primary ball, not just the primary ball handler, but the primary usage player if LeBron and AD are out tonight. And the Spurs are terrible this year. Like despite the hype around Wembyana, they're terrible. Their defense is terrible. They play super fast. Both teams, top 10 league in offensive pace, close spread, high over under. D'Angelo Russell could be the player for the Lakers tonight if LeBron and AD are out. How high would that number need to be for Russell to scare you off? Um, just oh. in case, you know, we do see major adjustments for injuries and stuff like that. Um, how high would it have to be for you to be like, uh, maybe not? It's probably going to be in the low 20s. Okay. So anything under, if it gets to 24 and a half, I don't know if it'll get that high. I don't know what his sure. normal normal uh, points prop is, but like a 22, 20, 22 and a half, 23 and a half, I think is fine. Probably and we talk about this a that. lot on the uh, the NFL shows, but is Russell a guy where you'd look at alternate markets to try to take advantage of potential variants, or is he not that kind of player even when those guys are out? No, he's he's been known to go for 30 plus, so that's, okay. I mean, given the matchup, which I already love to begin with. Okay. I mean, that, that that's actually a pretty good slant that I didn't really think about. Okay, so check out D'Ando Russell props once they're up for the Lakers and Spurs game. 24 and a half is where Tom gets a little bit hesitant for the, the reg- regular market, but also could potentially uh, dig into some alternate markets for Russell, depending on what those numbers look like for that one. 
Let's talk now about the NHL, Tom. Got some pretty fun games going on over there versus tonight. A total five-game slate in the NHL side of things. Let's begin things with the traditional markets there as well. What stands out to you in the NHL when looking at uh, sides and totals? The Bruins and the Devils over six and a half. It's uh, plus 104. For the Bruins, it's expected that their top defenseman, Charlie McAvoy, is going to be out tonight. The Bruins got off to another super hot start. They've taken a slight dip in production as of late, defensive defensive, you know, consistency as of late. The Devils got off to a slower start. They got healthy, and their offense has really picked up. And the Bruins also have an off- awesome offense to begin with. So these teams don't need help scoring. Also, on the other side for the Devils, their top defenseman, Dougie Hamilton, has been out for about a week at this point. So they have like all these teams have all this offense, lackluster on defense simply due to injuries. And it really should just present a very wide open game for both teams tonight. And if this game ends five to four, four to three in either side, I won't be surprised that like it could be a, it's a toss up game as the money line would kind of indicate. So uh, I'm I'm in for the over, not the winner. <laughs> Yeah, money line for Devils Bruins. Uh, Devils are minus 130. Bruins plus 108. Total, as Tom mentioned, is six and a half, plus 104 on the over for that one. Any other traditional markets you're eyeing here, Tom? That would be the Kings in regulation, their three way money line, which is minus 125. Uh, minus 180 for them on the money line, I think, is appropriate. Minus 125 for the regulation bet is what I prefer. They are back at home. They're coming off of a two-game losing streak. I'm not sure if I told you, said specifically, but I've said it on other shows where the Kings are awesome. And I'm not sure if a lot of people are particularly paying attention to that simply due to the fact that they don't necessarily have a superstar. And they're just like their start to the season was incredibly strong, but there were so many other storylines where Vegas is strong and Vancouver's strong and the Oilers were horrible and they fired their coach. And like there's all these storylines going on and they got overlooked. And the Kings are super strong because they play great defense. They're super deep down the middle at center, which is an extremely important thing to have, especially when it comes to the playoffs. And they're coming off of two losses. They're back at home. They're going up against the Jets, who are on the second night of a back-to-back. They traveled from San Jose last night. Also was announced yesterday for the Jets that their best player, Kyle Connor, is out for six to eight weeks due to a knee injury, which is an immense decrease to their offensive production. And it's like, this is the time for the Kings to like, okay, East Coast road trip doesn't end well with two losses. Back at home, time to show everybody who we are. Divisional matchup, or not divisional matchup, Western Conference matchup, come away with the win. It's as easy as that. And that's, again, a three-way money line uh, for the Jets and Kings. Tom likes the Kings minus 125 in that market. Uh, Specifically, you mentioned the money line, the overall money line uh, for them is minus 188 there as well. I prefer to go that route instead on the Kings. Let's talk player props, Tom. What you eyeing in that department for tonight? So the player prop market, at least at first glance, is is kind of tough tonight because they're like the the aisles have been playing a lot better as of late and the their shot props are accurate. They're just there's no value in the shot prop market. Yeah. The Penguins are in a good spot tonight going up against Montreal. I think Sidney Crosby is due for a goal. It's Sidney Crosby. He's amazing. We can say all these things. But more importantly, the matchup is fantastic. He has great shot volume as of late, and he, I think he only has one goal over his last four or five games. So we have a player with immense skill, easy matchup, incredible shot volume. He's just not scoring. I just don't like the odds. Mm-hmm. So it, it's kind of the same situation in some of these games where bad odds, great player, but it doesn't make the right combination. So the easiest spot for me tonight would be in Colorado with Nathan McKinnon over four and a half shots, minus 113, going up against Buffalo, six and a half over under. I'm expecting the over. Uh, McKinnon is averaging four and a half shots on goal per game. He has, uh, I think he's third or fourth in the league, depending after last night's, I would have to check in terms of overall shots in the league. He is constantly up there over the past few seasons, top center, Top forward, uh, top forward line center, and the top power play unit. I'm expecting the over hit, which means I'm expecting a lot of back and forth. Their defense has certainly slipped, which means they they're going to have to constantly push the pace because the Sabers aren't terrible on offense this year. I was expecting them to be a little bit better, but we had the right combination of odds, role, and production, and McKinnon kind of fits that not only tonight but on most nights. 
Very annoying when the sports books are on to the guys we want to target. Uh, so I definitely understand the pain there. McKinnon over four now shots, minus 113. Right now at FanDuel Sportsbook, you mentioned the total in this game. Six and a half right now for Sabres versus Avalanche. Over is minus 114. So it's not like you just like the game environment overall. And you think that McKinnon is a guy who, with the way he plays, benefits from that pretty greatly. Right. And, I mean, his speed and and the lackluster defense really from the Sabres should allow that. Overall. Okay. And if you can find a shot prop for the Isles, someone like Noah Dobson, I think he's at minus 188 or minus 180 for over two and a half, which is, it's a little heavy on the juice if you're asking me. If you could find it at minus 150, minus one, minus 140, I, I think he's listed there. If, uh, he's not in the alt market, unfortunately. Oh, actually, yeah, he is. He's plus 140 to get four plus shots. Uh, too much. Yeah. Yeah. It might be a little bit too much, like over two and a half or three plus. That's probably the best spot for him. He is taking a big step forward on offense this year. Yeah. Minus 182 to get three plus shots uh, for Dobson. So again, those dang sports books uh, doing their jobs. Well, very unfortunate um, when that happens. All righty. That is Tom Vecchio. Tom, want to thank you as always for the time. Uh, Looking forward to hearing you again later on today with primetime Tom talking that Raiders and Chargers game and good luck and enjoy all the basketball and hockey for tonight. Thanks for having me. All righty. Find Tom on Twitter at Tom underscore Vecchio one. I am on Twitter at Jim Saunders. You can find me on threads at Jim dots on You can find FanDuel research on Twitter at FanDuel research. Subscribe to covering the spread to get the primetime Tom show later on today. You can also find that on FanDuel TV plus want to thank you all for tuning in. Good luck to you all with your bets for tonight as well. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow for NFL week 15 preview. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel podcast network. 